Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Sandra and I make videos all about cyber security, having a career in technology as well as work vlogs. And today we are gonna be doing a career Q&A. But if you guys didn't know, um, he is a software engineer and I currently work in cyber security. So the first question is, what do you do on a day to day or what does your day to day look like? That's a very good question. Now working from home is very different from working in person. So working from home is mostly a lot of independent time so you would just be developing code looking at other people's code review for example developing features and for us we have daily stand-ups so i would attend them i also have a, a meeting every now and then so i will be attending those meetings yeah so overall a lot of coding times okay so normally i log in around 8 a.m 8 30 um, and then i'll check my email check my calendar for the day i usually have very early meetings on this new team so i mostly am sitting in on meetings almost almost all morning i'm um, with my team and then i will be doing some work and then i have more meetings <laughs> so i think my day definitely has a lot more meetings than his i guess in my day-to-day -day, i'll do like some testing reviews um documentation and i guess some scripting in python nowadays oh and i guess one more thing i forgot to add whoops um is that my team we have like this mailbox that we monitor so i feel like a lot of cybersecurity teams have something like that and yeah i i will also be monitoring monitoring that email inbox the whole day question two okay regrets what regrets do you have about your role or job or career if any if you know what you want to do in your career it's either app developing full stack machine learning data science make sure your first role is exactly that mm -hmm. or get a research position uh internship whatever that's associated with your role otherwise you might pigeonhole yourself you might get pushed into doing what you are already been working on because you already have experience so just try your hardest to pursue what you want to do if you already know but do you have any regrets <laughs> no <laughs> keep going Next. okay i don't think i have any big regrets i mean maybe one is maybe wanting to major in computer science instead of information technology which if you guys don't know that's what i majored in it definitely did teach me a lot of skills though i i do think it's just as broad as computer science but um, if I did want to go into something more math related, like data science or astrophysics, then it's kind of a lot harder with an IT degree versus a CS degree. So that might be a regret. Did you ever think you would be working in technology growing up? How did you get here? Hell no. <laughs> no. But look where I am now. So. I mean, my first major in college was nursing. I think I have mentioned that before on this channel, but... I mean, I, I didn't really have a set major. Yeah. It was kind of like my backup. And then I just kind of on a whim switched into tech. So, and I just happened to never leave because I happened to kind of like it <laughs> after after two yeah. years. So even if you don't like it your first like freshman, sophomore year. But yeah, I, no, I never thought I would be in tech. My parents never really worked traditional uh, jobs. Okay, how did you get your current job? At college, there's a bunch of career fairs. That's how I got my first internship going to the career fair so it's very important and then uh, for these big tech companies or tech company in general apply online do well on the coding assessment phone interview on site that's okay it. I, I feel like that really depends if you it, it needs to rely on if you went to a good school if you are already really good at coding because most people of course if they're just applying directly online like if you already have a strong resume I feel like that would be more of a reason for a company to give you their code view or hack hacker rank Sorry, this looks kind of weird. Oh, it kind of looks retro, but okay. Um, I got my first, or I got my current job from Grace Hopper, which is a conference. Um, I've talked about it on this channel. I might have a video on it, I think. Um, I can link it below if you guys haven't seen it. It's basically a conference. huge conference yeah. with a career fair and they do in-person interviews and you can get an offer on the spot in person. It's really, really cool. And I actually got my last internship and my current job from this conference. Um, and the connections I've made at this conference. So definitely look at the conferences if you're in college sure. or even someone who's experienced. A lot yeah. of these companies are hiring these big tech conferences. Yeah. Also hackathon. Conferences, True. hackathons, career fair at your school. Yeah, take advantage of all of those. What is your favorite coding language? My favorite coding language is Kotlin. Do I use it? No. Oh. Do I know it? Huh? Probably not. But why do I like it? 
Apparently it's the better version of Java. It has a bunch of features that's similar to Python that I think uh, we always needed. So I feel like in the future, Kotlin is going to be mainstream. I want to call the shots right now. It's Kotlin, okay. definitely for objective programming language. Go for distributed system like backend infrastructure stuff. And uh, yeah, front is going to be more TypeScript focused. So yeah, Kotlin. But besides that, yeah, Python is fun. But I, I might not like Python, I like Java. Oh, After working, I appreciate very objective programming language, structured, type safe. I always thought back then you liked Python more. Back in college. I think it's just, yeah, the syntax yeah. is just, just easier. Yeah. I guess I would say like Java. I mean, I actually prefer C Sharp, but I don't think a lot of companies prefer C Sharp. So, <laughs> actually, I guess, okay, I, there are companies, of course. I mean, the do, question is what you prefer C Sharp or Java? You can be honest here. I mean, if I'm really being honest, I would say C Sharp. Just because I have more experience with it, and I not a bad language. At but all. then they're pretty similar. I, yeah, I don't they know. are. But C sharp just makes things so much easier. But that also, you know, can be a bad thing if you're looking yeah. to be more flexible with things. You're probably using like .NET, ASPX. Mm. I feel like in my company, no one really talks about Kotlin Go. But I feel like in like a sure. bigger company or like companies yeah. who are using your Maybe. languages Maybe. and technology, yeah. they're probably using like something like that. Maybe. What are your future career goals? I guess when you're working, the goal is always to deliver the best product, learn as much as possible. Career-wise, promotion is always mm -hmm. one of the talking points, you know? You can't just not get promoted. So I guess getting promoted, have more responsibility and do better work. That's definitely short term. Yeah, I guess just working in cybersecurity and then maybe eventually pivoting into another sector. Yeah. Um, I don't really know where, but Maybe also starting my own consulting uh, business Fun. for cybersecurity or technology. Maybe doing some coaching. Yeah, stuff like that. Advice for someone who's looking to get into tech. Advice for someone who's gonna get into tech. You can go first. Well, I guess for me, since I'm specifically talking about cybersecurity, a few of you guys also ask me this question pretty often. So just getting your basics with Hack the Box, um, try Hack Me, doing a few capture the flag challenges. There's a lot of free ones out there that I can also link below and you can basically get free experience pen testing, hacking, also downloading Kali Linux and just practicing with all the tools on there, learning basic Linux commands. Yeah, I guess that would be kind of the basics. Maybe getting a beginner cybersecurity certification just to get your foundational knowledge down. Those would kind of be my general tips for kind of right. getting into cyber. I guess my advice is make sure you actually like the technology. You actually enjoy the field, not just because it's such a big field, it's a trend. Make sure technology is something you're actually passionate about. Being a software engineer is, a, is hard work. It, it could be really, really hard and time consuming. It could be pretty draining. So like, make sure you actually enjoy what you're doing and you put in the time and effort. Don't be afraid. How do you keep a balance between work and personal life? So you have to have a clear separation between work and home. So when you're outside work, I normally don't think about work at all. And the best advice would be now it's harder because you're working from home. So try to work at a certain area. Once you get off work, try to avoid that area. So you don't always feel like, oh, this is where I'm working. Like this is the mindset. Because now you working from home make you feel like you're always working. Like have a boundary, like a line, something physical you can, you can take. Yeah, I think this one for me is kind of hard because like, I feel like he's very good at shutting off that switch between work and personal life, but I can't stop thinking about it, especially when things are busy. And it just so happens on um, in my new team, since I'm you know just getting started, things are always busy. So I find myself just always thinking about work. Even as I'm like falling asleep, I'm thinking about the conversations I had in the meetings that day or yeah. what I have coming up tomorrow or like just things that could go wrong or you know, like, I guess yeah. they're just like anxieties. So I'm trying to focus less on, well, I can't really shut those thoughts out, but I mean, I've been trying to like yeah. listen to more like calming music. Do other activities. Some meditation. Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> distract yourself with other activities. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't really have a way to keep them separate, but I mean, I do have two separate laptops for work and my personal life. So yeah. when one is on, it's taking priority over the other. And that's kind of how I just 
separate it even though i'm sitting you know in the same exact spot with just two laptops next to each other best decision you've ever made for your career wow the best decision i would say to pick up this major man like mm. i would have been screwed if i kept going like either chemical engineer bio engineer or like really you like you're going maybe not you like you go engineer like I wouldn't say screwed, but uh, I wasn't really enjoying those topics. So like I would say like the best decision I made is to actually pick something I enjoy doing. Mm. I'm glad I was able to figure out by my junior year. Some of you might think, wow, junior year, that's too late to pivot. I pivoted because I know I don't want to get stuck into doing something that I don't enjoy. So I took the chance, I switched, and I think it paid out big time. Wait, that's kind of funny because my regret i think was choosing my major <laughs> and then your your best career it's not, choice it's was... not major just picking yeah. technology okay yeah. okay gotcha i guess it would just be choosing my current company my current role i guess yeah. since i had the chance to go through a rotation program and not every entry level role lets you have the option because i'm two years into my career but i've already been on three teams yeah. in my current company so yeah, because I've just met so many people, worked with so many different people, worked on different things. Yeah. And my resume just looks really colorful, even though yeah. it's kind of like a mix of everything. Mm -hmm. I actually prefer it that way. I don't yeah. I don't want to be in one team for like years and years and years. Um, so I kind of like learning different things and getting to see different areas yeah. in the company. Yeah. Nice. I mean, you also got to build different skill sets that you get to use at your current role. Like some, yeah. something you would never have if you only have been on one team, so. True. Um, and I guess just working on like different um, DNI initiatives, mm -hmm. but I guess they weren't really decisions, I guess they were decisions because I chose to work on them, but um, those are just things I do on the side, outside of, like on top of my day job, but yeah. it definitely makes work fun. <laughs> All right, what is your favorite part of your job? Favorite part of my job? The flexibility, the ability to work from home. So working in tech really enable you, allow you to work from pretty much anywhere that has a Wi-Fi connection. And the fact that my company really care about the employee, that's something like you should care about, like, because you are putting in so much effort. What is my favorite part of my job? Okay, I think my favorite part of my job is getting to connect with different people. I think I was gonna say something like getting to work on different things every day, but... Your opportunity for network mm -hmm. is out of this world. Yeah, like networking is a huge, huge part of your career. And I was actually sitting in on a panel recently or you know, like listening in to a panel. Mm. And one of the things that someone said, who actually just happened to be my old manager, um, she said that like, she used to think that networking or like talking to people, planning one-on-ones, coffee chats, were like a waste of time and like they take away from your day, but, but they're actually part of your job. Like it's part of your job to network and talk mm. to people yeah. and basically get to know other people that aren't just your direct teammates because yeah. eventually when you're driving projects or starting new initiatives you need people on board to help push your project forward like it, it's not there's no such thing as a one man or one woman army especially in corporate so if you have an idea and you're the only one that believes in it but you don't have no other connections to help you it's, it's really not going to get anywhere so making sure that you know that networking and getting to know people is also part of your job yeah. and it, like if you're working on something hard that you are just starting out with but you know someone who's done something like this and you can just reach out and it honestly makes your life so much easier to have those connections and know who to tap on the shoulder when you need some help or and of course you're doing the same for them too if yeah. there's something that you can help them with it's always so, both way yeah, yeah yeah there's two questions left so first one is or i guess first to last second to last second. how do you stay motivated in your job Ooh, my favorite one okay <laughs> um like i mentioned if you really like the technology and the work you are doing like the problem you're solving. I think it's easy to stay motivated because you are working on something that aligns with your personal goal. It's a lot harder to stay motivated at work if you're just doing random stuff. Like I'm gonna be honest with you. If you're working on boring projects, you don't have a lot of work, like it's hard to stay motivated. The best advice, find something that you are truly passionate about, enjoy doing. Don't be afraid of uncomfortableness because mm -hmm. that's how you know you're actually learning and you will feel empowered. Yeah, it's like that quote that we say, I feel like so many times on this channel, no growth in the comfort zone, no comfort in the growth zone. So if you're uncomfortable, it's a good thing. 
Okay, <laughs> certain uncomfortability. Yeah, it shouldn't yeah, be like to the point where you're like throwing up and you're just yeah. an anxious mess. But yeah. just like some uncomfortableness is good for your growth. So I think staying loaded for me is honestly just a long-term view. So I honestly have mm. many more goals outside of just my, That's I guess, their career right now. And like I know that what I'm doing now is going to build on top of that. And the skills I'm learning in my current team, in my current role, are going to help me down the line into whatever careers I decide to build out. So because of that, I think just having that thought in mind that this is just the beginning of your career. Like, I mean, I'm only two years in, like we're only two years in. So, you know, there's so much more to do. And I feel like that's what excites me the most because I like kind of planning out things and yeah. writing out like future goals, future Patient. plans, um, five, 10, 15 year like goals. So I like having that in mind and that's really what motivates me. Stay goal oriented. Yeah. Final question of the day. How do you avoid burnout? Wait, should I go first? Yeah. Okay. I asked the question. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know, maybe I have felt burnout before, but I never really put a title on it. But usually this is for when things get too busy with mm. my work life and my personal life. And then I kind of give up on both things. I mean, not give up, but I just go with the flow. Um, I'm not really pushing myself as hard because I just don't have the motivation to do so. But to avoid it, I really think that you need to take time for yourself away from the work and even outside of work, whatever you're doing in your personal life, that's like side hustles, um, hanging out with friends, things that aren't directly adding, yeah, adding to you. And like, basically it's like the analogy, you can't pour from an empty cup and if you're always just giving, you're not, like you're not really living to your highest potential. Mm -hmm. You're just gonna be drained and you're really not gonna be giving 100% into anything that you're doing. Yeah. So the first things first is to fill your cup first and do other things after. Like yeah. everything else in your life should be a second thought yeah. compared to just taking care of yourself and your, your peace. Yeah, burnout definitely feels awful. I know how it feels. So even if you are motivated, you love the work, Sometimes you can work too hard and then you feel burned out. And I think it's always good to have a straight line and then trying to time box when you have to work and pace yourself. It's not like a sprint, it's a marathon. You want to pace yourself. And you make sure to communicate with your manager if you always feel like burning out. And uh, there's something wrong if you're constantly being pushed and feel like burned out. Maybe this isn't, this isn't for you. Maybe you need to consider switching teams, switching jobs. Yeah, definitely have a life outside of work. Try to use the opposite side of your brain. Go to some paint night, go do something, go on walks. Like while you're working, also take breaks. Like that would definitely help with burnout. Sorry, I'm just <laughs> avoiding yeah. the shadow. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys found it helpful. Please drop in the comments below um, any questions that you might have or maybe even your answers to some of these questions. We would love to hear. Yeah, put a bunch of questions out down there. I'm gonna start a podcast. Yeah, so he is going to be starting a podcast channel, so I will link that down below mm -hmm. if it's already up. Um, I don't know if there's going to be any videos up by the time I post yeah. this, but if there is, I'll link them in the description below. Definitely check it out. If you're interested, it will be all about tech, career focused. Tech drama. No. Well, yeah. Maybe, potentially. Yeah. So definitely check that out if you guys are interested. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesday at 2 p.m. and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video.